Hi, this is Justin from Ajar Productions. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the N5 tour document. So if you're interested in learning how to create interactive content, whether it be digital magazines that are flipbooks, you want to create things that look like mobile apps, you want to make websites with InDesign without coding, then the InDesign tour document is a great place to get started. Anytime that you install N5, whether it's the first time you've installed it or you're installing an update, the next time you open InDesign, it will open up this tour document for you so that you can play around with the interactive features and get comfortable with them so that you can use them in your own documents. I'm going to take a few minutes here with you and walk through the document and show you what it does. On the first page, it tells you how to export the document. We would just go up to N5 and choose Easy Export Wizard. Let's hold off on that and take a look at some of these pages in InDesign before we export them to the browser. One thing you might want to think about is opening up some of the interactive panels in InDesign. They can be found under Window in the Interactive section. So you might want to open up things like Animation, Buttons and Forms, Hyperlinks, Media, and Object States, and possibly Timing. Now let's scroll through this document and see that there's a table of contents. This is a live table of contents that's generated from these headings on the right side of the page. These will be hyperlinked in the output, and they're all created using layout table of contents. On the third page, you will find some of the recent updates to N5. So if you're just updating and you want to see what's changed in a previous version, this is a quick overview, and it might give you some indications in case anything has changed in this tour document so you can see if there's anything new that you want to play around with. You can see that there's embedded page navigation in here. So this right here is linked up and we can check that in the hyperlinks panel. I'll double click on that and you can see that it will open page four of the document. And we'll be able to test that in the output. Close that for now. There's a video here and we can take a look at the video details as it says in the instructions here on screen using the media panel. So we could set a, a different thumbnail image, a different poster image for this. So if I like this one, I could just refresh this and it would change it. This video is loaded from a server. So you can look at that uh, by clicking on this place video from server. That's there. And if you want to get into more details about the video, you can actually go up to N5 Interactive Widgets and down to the Video Widget. And that will give you additional options such as Mute Video, which is what actually allows it to play in the browser and get around the browser's security restriction of expecting interaction before playing any media. And you can also set the controller skin. So this one happens to have a big play button. Uh, we could set it to None. So it will just have nothing there and autoplay by itself. But if we put the big play button, it'll allow uh, replaying of that. So let me close that and go to the next page. You might also notice that there is a navigation button on here. And I can't click it because it's on the master page. So in looking at this page, it is connected with the A master, which if you're using InDesign 2022, that'll actually be, I think it's called parent page now. So if I select this button, I can open this in the Buttons and Forms panel and see that it has a Go to Destination action, which is added with this plus sign here. And it goes to the Table of Contents bookmark. So all of these are bookmarks. You can find them in the Bookmarks panel. They're all created by the Table of Contents. So you can use those as an easier form of navigation instead of typing in page numbers. So those are a little bit easier to track, and they can potentially move around if the pages move around or you add additional pages. Let's go back to our next page. This is embedded HTML. There are instructions here on how you can add HTML using object insert HTML. This happens to be an embedded YouTube video. On this page, you can explore animation. So if I select this object, you can see it has a spin applied to it, and it's set to loop indefinitely. So when this button is clicked, let me select the Buttons and Forms panel, you can see it will start the animation, and this button will stop the animation. So down here under Options, it says Stop. This button will hide all these buttons using Hide and Show, and this button will show all those buttons. And then go to URL, simply 
takes us to a web page. We can also use the go to first page and go to last page actions. So this is a great way to explore that type of interactivity. Over here I have a series of radio buttons. So these buttons, because they're grouped together, will be treated as a radio group by N5. When you click on them, it will highlight one and deselect the others. So each one of these buttons has a series of states. So you can see that uh, it'll turn red when selected. And it has a matching uh, rollover state. So you can play around with having those functional radio buttons. This one functions like a checkbox, but it looks a little bit fancier when it's selected. So you can play around with that type of functionality. And here I have a multi-state object. There are buttons that will go through the object itself. So let's look at those. Go to next state, go to previous state. This object actually is a multi-state object with three different states. So there are three different colors to the t-shirt. And if you select one of these and go into the buttons panel, you can see that hovering over it, uh, either hovering, there's the release or tap, and there's also a, a roll over. We'll set that. So this page gives you concrete examples of how you can change the display state of objects in InDesign using buttons. And this one is very similar. It's a multi-state object, uh, but it has a slideshow set up. So if we go up to the N5 menu, down to Interactive Widgets and Slideshow, you can see that this is set to autoplay and crossfade, and it will go, it'll switch slides at an interval of two seconds. And you can also swipe to change it. In addition to that widget, there's a bunch of other cool stuff. On the next page, you can see that this document is set up to work with liquid layouts. So if you want to play with liquid layout rules, this document is a good playground to try that out. For example, this text frame will resize with the page in terms of its height and width, and it'll stay pinned to the right. And there are instructions on this page on how to export this to change the settings. And you can use the full export dialog to get it more precise. So you can actually render this as live text so that it shifts around as things scale. So again, a great playground page to just try that out before you apply it to any of your live documents. And then just some Q&A and another animation. So let me now go back to the first page and we will follow the instructions to export and you can see what that looks like. So go up to N5 and choose Easy Export Wizard. And I'll just select the recommended option here, the Modern Digital uh, Magazine, and select Pixel Perfect Text, click Next, and go ahead and export. And N5 will run through and export all of the pages and include all of the interactivity from our multi-state objects, buttons, our hyperlinks, all of the animation so that we can see those in the output. Now to open the document, I'm just going to click open in default browser. And here's our document. It's got all of the default things that we would expect. It's got the navigation button, the social share icons, it's got the viewer display. Of course, these are all things that we can turn off if we don't want to see them. I'm going to use the in page navigation here. Actually, let me reload the page so you can see the opening animation. This is in fact a button. I didn't talk about that on the first page, but you can play around. This is a button with animation and I'll click next and you can see that these are all hyperlinked. So if I go to the audio and video, there we had our poster image that we set up. The video plays and when it gets done, it rewinds and gives us that big play button just like we asked it to. If I click the home button, it takes me back to the table of contents Then I can jump to the embedded HTML and then here is the embedded YouTube video about embedded HTML. I'm just going to use the next button to go to this next page. Let's go ahead and animate the star. You can see that'll spin indefinitely until I stop it. So we have stopping, starting, and there's actually uh, pausing and resuming control as well. We can hide buttons, show them. We can go to a different website. And we can, can of course, uh, navigate between the pages. And then here is the radio buttons. You can see there's a rollover, and if I click one, it highlights. If I click a different one, that one highlights, and this one gets deselected. There's the fancy checkbox. And here is the multi-state object with the buttons that control it, and here's the rollovers. Going to the next page, there's the slideshow with the same states, and here's the responsive and there's our animation 
at the end. So that's the tour document. It's not super complicated, but it's a great playground if you want to test things out. And then if you're wondering, well, what do I do with this file? This is actually a file on my hard drive. Going back to InDesign, you can see the dialog for InDesign completing its export. In addition to having this option of opening in the browser, we could also open the containing folder and work with the HTML and the other assets. But I want to call your attention to there's both an expert tip down here based on options in your document, content in your document uh, to help you be successful in whatever you're trying to accomplish. But then if you want an even more detailed what do I do now, check out this what do I do now button. If you're just not sure how to publish and what to do, click on it and it will give you a page with specific things that you can do in this document. So it'll give you a list of articles, uh, video courses that might help you with this document, and some frequently asked questions. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to see more like this. I hope to see you in another video soon.